So now we'll talk about the other component of the velocity gradient tensor, namely the rotation tensor Rij. Rij we defined earlier as dui dxj minus duj dxi. Now, this tensor is antisymmetric. And so it can be written as a vector, as we've discussed previously in the tensor chapter. And in this particular case, we call this vector the gradient, uh, the curl of U omega, which is the vorticity. And as we've shown before, we can write Rij using the alternating tensor epsilon ijk curl of u the k element which is just minus epsilon ijk omega k and the components of omega are omega 1 equals du3 dx2 minus du2 dx3 omega 2 is du1 dx3 minus du3 dx1 and w3 is du2 dx1 minus du1 dx2. Let's consider a case of pure rotation. Say we start, and no shear, say we start with a square fluid element at time t, and this element rotates by an angle d alpha here and d beta for the other element. So analogously to what we showed earlier, d alpha is just du1 dx2 dt and d beta is just dut2 dx1 dt and since this is rigid body rotation d beta really is the same as d alpha just with a negative sign since we've defined them in opposing opposing directions. So it's du1 dx2 dt. And this makes sense now because if you combine these you will find that s12 which is just d dt d dt of alpha plus beta is 0 i.e. there is no shear. However, but our average rate of rotation is given by a half d by dt alpha minus beta and it's a minus here because we've defined d beta to point in the clockwise direction and so if you plug in 
your expressions for d alpha and d beta into here and take the limit the limit of t goes to 0 we have 1 over 2 dt d alpha minus d beta and we find that this is simply du1 dx2 which is a half of du1 dx2 minus du2 dx1 which is just a half of r12 a half r12 is the same as minus a half r21 which is also the same as minus a half omega 3 and this is what we call our fluid rotation rate and what I want to point out that in this particular case we have solid body rotation but the more general form given here is holds also when there is deformation so you can have a fluid element that is deforming due to shear but that deformation contains a non-zero rotational component and that rotational component is then described by R12 in our case. So to conclude our vorticity vector just as our rotation tensor represent twice the fluid rate of rotation. And notably, we can always find a frame of reference for which Rij is zero, i.e. when the frame of reference rotates with the fluid. We can always find a frame of reference at which Rij equals zero, i.e. when the frame of reference rotates with the fluid. Now, there are two kinematic concepts that I want to mention at this point. And the first one being, number one, is the special case where omega is zero. And that's what we call irrotational flows. In that case, 
if omega, which is the curl of u, is 0, then we can write our velocity field u as the gradient of a scalar field phi. In vector notation, we would write this as ui equals d phi. In index notation, sorry, dxi, where phi is a scalar function, phi function of x and t. And that is true since the curl of the gradient of a scalar field is zero. And why would we do that? Well, solving fluid equations with a gradient of a scalar field can be easier than for a vector field u. Because solving fluid equations with grad phi can be easier than for u. The second concept is circulation, and I'll talk about that in the next segment.